Hello, sixth graders. Welcome to Big Ideas Math, Section 2.3, Dividing Mixed Numbers Lesson. Pause while you write Section 2.3 Lesson in your math notebook. Pause again while you write today's lesson objective, Divide Mixed Numbers, in your math notebook. Today we'll be working on the examples in your textbook on pages 72 and 73. Take a moment to write the key idea at the top of page 72 in your math notebook. Let's read it together. Dividing mixed numbers. Write each mixed number as an improper fraction. Then divide as you would with proper fractions. Let's take a look at example 1. Dividing a mixed number by a fraction. Our problem is to divide 2 and 1 fourth divided by 3 eighths. So remember from fifth grade, we take 2 and 1 fourth, we multiply 4 times 2, which is 8, and then we add 1 to turn that into 9 fourths. So that's the improper fraction. And then we're going to divide that by 3 eighths. So our new problem is written to the right. So we wrote 2 and 1 fourth as an improper fraction, 9 fourths. And then we multiply by the reciprocal of 3 eighths, which is 8 thirds. So our new problem is right below. And when we go to multiply our fractions, we're going to divide out the common factors to make simplifying easier. And we know that 4 goes into 8 two times, so that cancels out. And 3 goes into 9 three times, so the top of our fraction, the numerator, is 3 times 2, which is 6. And the denominator is 1 times 1, which is 1, so our answer is just 6. And here's a model to check our work. Let's look at example 2. Dividing mixed numbers. We're dividing 3 and 5 sixths by 1 and 2 thirds. We're going to estimate that 3 and 5 6 is close to 4, and 1 and 2 thirds is close to 2. 4 divided by 2 equals 2. So we multiply 6 times 3, which is 18, plus 5 is 23 over 6. So our improper fraction is 23 6, and 1 and 2 thirds transfers over to become 5 thirds because 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2 is 5. So we wrote our mixed numbers as improper fractions. And then we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of 5 thirds which is 3 fifths. So that's our second step. And when we multiply we divide out the common factors so we look for those. 3 goes into 6 2 times, so our 3 becomes a 1, our 6 becomes a 2, 5 unfortunately does not go into 23, so we have to leave that alone. So we multiply the top, 23 times 1 equals 23, 2 times 5 equals 10, but that's still an improper fraction, so we divide the top by the bottom, and we come up with 2 and 3 tenths when we simplify. So the quotient is 2 and 3 tenths. Is it reasonable? Is it close to our estimate? And the answer is yes. Now we're going to turn the page and look at page 73, example 3. Let's look at the remember box because it's a good thing to remember. It says to be sure to check your answers whenever possible. In example 3, you can use estimation to check that your answer is reasonable. So our problem in example 3, we're using the order of operations, and it has us, to, has us evaluating, which means find the answer, to 5 and 1 fourth divided by 1 and 1 eighth minus 2 thirds. So if we estimate 5 and 1 fourth, 5 is close to 5 and 1 fourth is close to 5, 1 and 1 eighth is close to 1, and 2 thirds is close to 1. So 5 divided by 1 equals 5, and then you subtract 1, 
and that's close to 4. So let's remember when we get to the end of the problem to check and be sure if our answer is close to 4. So we're going to go through our steps again, remembering our order of operations. We remember that we need to divide before we subtract. So 5 and 1 fourth, we're first going to write each mixed number as an improper fraction. 4 times 5 is 20, plus 1 is 21. So that becomes the top of the fraction. The bottom stays the same. So it's 21 fourths. And then 1 and 1 8. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 1 is 9. 9 is the numerator. 8 is the denominator. So we changed both of our fractions to improper fractions. And then our 2 thirds stays the same. We need to keep it there so we don't forget that we need to subtract it. And then we're going to multiply our numbers that we're dividing by the reciprocal of 9 eighths, which is 8 ninths. So if you look down in the next step, we are dividing out the common factors. 4 goes into itself one time, and it goes into 8 two times. Nine goes. 3 goes into 9 3 times, and 3 goes into 21 7 times, so that makes those numbers a little bit smaller. So don't forget to tag on your 2 thirds there so it doesn't get lost. When we multiply, we have 7 times 2 is 14, and that's our numerator, and 1 times 3 is 3. We can leave this an improper fraction for right now, because we're not finished with our problem yet. Thankfully, when we divided out our common factors, it gave us a numerator of 3, which matches up with our numerator in 2 thirds, so that when we go to subtract, we don't have to do anything to make our numerators the same. So 14 thirds minus 2 thirds is 12 thirds. So when we go to simplify that and make that not an improper fraction, we take 12 and divide it by 3 and we get 4. And Check our estimation. Is 4 close to 4? It's pretty spot on. So finally, in example 4, we have a real-life application. One serving of tortilla soup is 1 and 2 thirds cups. A restaurant cook makes 50 cups of soup. Is there enough to serve 35 people? So we want to find out how many servings of soup we're going to get out of 50 cups of soup if each serving is 1 and 2 thirds cups. So we're dividing 50 by 1 and 2 thirds to find the number of servings. So 50 divided by 1 and 2 thirds equals 50 over 1 divided by 5 thirds. So we rewrote everything as an improper fraction. And then we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of 5 thirds. And when we do that, we divide out the common factors. 5 goes into 50 10 times. We can't do anything with the 1 and the 3. So 10 times 3 is 30, and 1 times 1 is 1. Nothing to simplify, but we have 30 servings. So 30 is less than the 35 that we want. So there's not a new, enough soup to serve 35 people. So we need to make more soup or not invite so many people. So there we go. Our assignment for this lesson is to complete the on your own problems, numbers 1 through 9 on pages 72 and 73 of your textbook. Show your work and be prepared to share during your ne our next class. Please remember, to earn credit for viewing this flipped lesson, you need to complete your exit slip back at the website. You also need to come to our next class prepared with the journal pages that we did during the flipped lesson or any other work that we did for the flipped lesson completed. You also need to be prepared with any work that was assigned in the flipped lesson completed and be ready with any questions you have for your teacher and, as always, have a good attitude. We'll see you tomorrow in class. Remember to earn credit for viewing this flipped lesson. You must complete your exit slip. 
You must come to our next class prepared with your journal pages or any other work that we did during the flipped lesson completed, and you need to be prepared with any work that was assigned during the flipped lesson completed. Be prepared with any questions you have about the content of the flipped lesson and a good attitude. We'll see you in class tomorrow.